It's the race for the White House, and right now some of the leading Democrats running for president are standing in one of the most important places in modern American history, and they are with someone who made it so important. This is Selma, Alabama, the Edmund Pettus Bridge, where a peaceful march for equal human rights turned horribly violent 55 years ago this week. And meeting the crowd on that bridge just a short time ago, U.S. Congressman John Lewis riding onto the bridge in the back seat of this car. Lewis, of course, was badly hurt in a police beating on that bridge in 1965 and has attended every commemorative march since. His attendance today, of course, even more meaningful after his dreadful health news just a few weeks ago when we learned he has stage four pancreatic cancer. And Congressman Lewis spoke to people on that bridge just a short time ago, urging them to make their voices heard this election season. children attempted to march from Brown Chapel Amy Church across this bridge. We were beaten, we were tear gas. I thought I was going to down this bridge. But somehow in some way God Almighty helped me here. Yes. Yes. We cannot give up now. No, no. We cannot give in. No. We must keep the faith, keep our eyes on the prize. We must go out and vote like we never, ever voted before. Some people gave more than a little blood. Some gave their very lives. I said to each and every one of you, especially you young people, the fraternities and sororities. Yes, sir. You look good. You look colorful. Go out there. Speak up. Speak out. Get in the way. Get in good trouble. Good trouble. Get in good trouble. And help redeem the soul of America. Thank each and every one of you. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give in. I'm going to continue to fight. We need your prayers now more than ever before. Let's do it. Let's do it. Selma is a different place. America is a different place. But we can make it much better. We must use the vote as a nonviolent instrument or tool to redeem the soul of America. Thank you very much. Good to see you. That man, Congressman John Lewis, is on the phone with us right now. First, Congressman, so great to hear you today. So many people care for you. You sounded strong there in Selma, but really, how are you doing? How are you feeling? I'm doing well. I'm feeling good, stronger and stronger every day. That is wonderful to hear. Tell us why it was so important for you to be on that bridge today. Well... 55 years ago, I gave a little blood on that bridge. Mm -hmm. And I felt that I should come back and be here with the people. Because there's still hundreds, thousands, and millions of people in America that have been left out and left behind. People voting rights are being abused or denied. People are still standing in long lines when they come to register when it comes to vote. And we, make it, we must make it simple and easy for people to participate in the democratic process. In your memoir, you wrote about your experience in 1965. Quote, if there was ever a time in my life for me to panic, it should have been then, but I didn't. I remember how strangely calm I felt as I thought, this is it. People are going to die here. I'm going to die here. What was it like to be back on that bridge in Selma today? It was very moving to be back on the bridge today, to see hundreds and thousands of young people with their mothers, their fathers, their grandparents, great-grandparents, to see black and white people, Hispanics, and others standing together, marching together, walking together, to not forget what happened and how it happened. 
In your remarks, you talked about the importance of voting. You said, quote, vote like you've never voted before. What did you mean by that? A simple meant that we have the power to change things. And the vote is the most powerful nonviolent instrument or tool we have in a democratic society. And we must use it. If we fail to use it, we will lose it. Uh, you also spoke about redeeming the soul of America. What does that look like? We got to make America better for all of her people. But no one is left out or left behind because of their race, their color, because of where they grew up or where they were born. We are one people. We are one family. We all live in the same house. That's the American house. But what do you see as the next step? Because you spoke on the bridge about how times are different today than they were in 1965, thank goodness, and yet there's more progress to be made, right? What do you see as the next step? We got to continue to see that all of our young people, all of our children, receive the best possible education. We got to see that people are able to move up and not stay down. We must continue to say we must respect the dignity and the worth of all of our citizens. We live in a strange period. I live and grew up during the days of different presidents. And I met with presidents. I got to know President Kennedy, met with him twice. That was a greater sense of hope, a greater sense of optimism. And we must find a way to inject into the very vein of America that sense of hope, that sense of optimism for all of our citizens. What gives you hope today? I am very hopeful and very optimistic that we're going to work everything out. It's the feeling that the changes that I continue to witness in so many different parts of America. And the American people want us to be hopeful, to be optimistic, and to lead them to a better place, to a better time. And that's what we must do. Finally, what is your message to any young potential John Lewis out there today trying to make whatever it is they do count and make a better, more equal, more just life for those that are in the future generations? I would say to young people, to be bold, be brave, be courageous, never become bitter or hostile, never hate, or as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said on so many occasions, hate is too heavy a burden to bear. The way of love is a much better way.